Hello and welcome to another video of in Scrap Neek TV. I am excited to um, talk about shadowing today and I am going to be working in Pixlr um, which is a free option that you can you don't even have to download anything on your computer so if you're just brand new and wanting to experiment with digital scrapbooking and not wanting to invest in a lot yet this is a great place to start. So I'm going to show you how to get there completely from a brand new tab. So you go to, you open up um, your browser and you do P-I-X-L-R. So it's kind of, you know, weird Pixlr, um, but without many, vet, many vowels in it. And then you'll want the editor and you can see it, that option comes up here. So we're going to click that and it will bring you to this screen right here. You can create a new image. I usually do it um, open image from computer. And I start off there. And I'm just going to choose a background paper that we're going to be doing um, for our layout. So you can go straight to a kit you're working in. This is today's mini that you can get from the resource library. It's free. Um, and I click open. And it opens it right there for me in the screen. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in um, my photo. And there are two ways in Pixlr to do this. So we can open a photo. So we can go to, oh, whoops. And this is the confusing part. You don't want to go up to this top menu. Sometimes that's my temptation. But you want to stay down with these in this little black section. This is the menu we want to work with. So we're going to go to image. And then we're going to go to file, open image. And now I'm going to pull a photo. It's a photo of my daughter dressed in a Harry Potter or Hermione costume. And it opens it sideways. So no problem. It's super easy to fix. You just go to image and rotate canvas 90 degrees. And there you go. Oops, and it can scroll in or out. Now you can move it over and you can probably even make this a little smaller maybe. Anyway you can move this over to the side. So from here, when you've got it open, um, it's probably going to be a lot bigger than what we need on here. So we're just going to do image size. And so 2200 pixels, think of it this way, 3600 pixels is the same size as 12 inches. So 24 inches or 2400 pixels would be um, kind of a third of that. But you can see on the height, 4000, that's bigger than our whole paper is going to be. So I'm just going to slide, I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to make it about 1500. And that's still, that's still a thousand less than the whole height. So I'm going to click OK. Okay, and then from here, we're going to go up to Edit, Select All, and that selects our photo for us. Edit, Copy, and then when I click on this black title of the paper, I can do Edit, Paste, and it puts it right there for us. Okay, and then we can close this out because we're done with it. And if any edit editing you would have wanted to do, you could do before you put it over on your paper. You don't need to save it because I want to keep it at its original size. So now we've got our picture on here. Okay, now the other way to do it is um, through layer, open image as layer, and then that opens it right in here. And I'm going to do that actually for some of the pieces of our kit. So we're going to do, let's go ahead and do the leaves. Okay, and I'm just going to open up a few more things all at once. Um, open images layer, we'll do flower. Okay, so we're just going to work on coloring these three pieces. Now, if you want, um, if you notice over here, we've got the layers. 
This is considered our layer palette right here, and you can slide it over. Okay, and background is locked in place, and that's because it's a JPEG, and that's what's on bottom. Then we have our photo layer, and I suggest naming these so that it gets easier to know which one we're working on. Leaves and flower. Okay, so with the photo, we are going to add a style to it. And we're going to add a drop shadow, which is considered a layer style. So if you notice on this little thing, this um, image that has a little star in the corner, that's the layer styles. And you just click it once, and we click drop shadow. Okay, now it's added this shadow. And that looks so unrealistic. You would not want to leave it just like that. So to change it, you just double click right next to the word. And it pulls up our menu here. Now the first thing I always change is the color. I don't like a really harsh black. So a lot of times I will go kind of over to like an orange red. And then I'll find like more of a brown, a brownish gray. So it's still a gray, but it has some brown tint to it. And click OK. And that's changed it a little bit, but we're going to make even more changes to it. And you can go even a little darker because we're going to soften that up but okay now we're going to do the now the next thing we're going to do and I like to work from the um, bottom to the top is we're going to change the angle so right now it looks the shadow is showing up here and and for whatever reason I like my shadow on this side so it's totally up to you but I like to click and shift it So you can kind of play around with it and get to where you like it. Okay, so now I've got the angle in the right place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the distance because that's this part, how far away from it it is. Now, with this one, always consider whatever item it is you're shadowing. If you were doing this realistically, is a photo going to be far from your... Um, paper or really really close. See I think a paper or a photo is going to be really close so it's barely going to have a shadow. So more about a three. Now the size this deals with kind of like the what blends it out a little. So we don't want much of a size but we don't want it so harsh like it is now. So we're just going to do there, like a six, four or five, right in that area. And then we're going to click OK. You see that looks pretty realistic and however we move the photo, our shadow is still there. Now we're going to come up to our leaves. Now if you notice, this little star here has been added to our photo. Here's what's really cool. If you hold down your Alt or your Option key, depending on if you're on um, a Mac or a PC, Hold that key down and click on that style and drag it up. Oh, it didn't copy it. Okay, so never mind. That doesn't work the same like I thought it would. So we do have to, so that trick does work in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, but apparently not in Pixlr. So we're going to just highlight leaves and we're going to click the layer style. I'm going to click drop shadow and we're going to double click to get it. And here we're just going to kind of go as quickly as possible as we can through this. Move the angle back over to about here. Okay, now with leaves you are going to have a little more distance. You know, you might have like an eight but you're going to be even a little more fuzzy because the farther it is from something, the, the more of, um, I'm just going to click OK, the more blurry the shadow, the less defined it might be. Now the other thing I want to do on these leaves is I think they're kind of big compared to my photo. So to make, to change that size, 
I can click on Edit and go down to Free Transform. And it gives me the little box. And if I hold down the Shift, I can make them smaller. And if I hover close to the corner, I can turn it. There we go. And then I can just come back up. Oops, and apply the changes. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and edit these. And I'm going to take this down just a little. And maybe even the distance change to maybe a 5. Okay. I, I like to be very careful not to overdo my shadows because I find that um, you don't want your items on your page digitally to look like it's floating off the page. So drop shadows are fun because they bring life to your page and not it makes things not look so flat. But you want to also be careful not to, to overdo it. Okay, next I'm going to click on my flower and I'm going to pull it down. And I like the size of my flower, so now I'm just going to click the layer style, drop shadow, double click, and... And you'll get to be quite the pro. And one of the advantages of using Photoshop and Photoshop Elements is you can automate a lot of the steps so that with a click of one button, you get the same um, shadow style all the time. And so that makes it a little faster than... But this is such a nice program if you're wanting to just get started for free. So we're going to do this down to probably about a six. And this up to about a nine, no, about a three. And click OK. So there we go. We've got our shadow on our flower, on our leaves, and on our photo. And I'm going to go ahead and finish scrapping this, this layout using the kit. Um, but that this is how you add, how you do a drop shadow and get it as realistic as possible in using the program Pixlr. Thank you for joining me and for more tutorials and lots of free kits and digital scrapbooking goodies, you can go to my site at thedigicrafter.com and I will talk to you later.